right, everybody, it is your Friday lunchtime if you're in the Central Time Zone or the Eastern Time Zone. Motivational moment. So funny story. I did the intro but forgot to hit the live button. But now I know we are live. Today we've got a tremendous show. We have Sari Yuchin, CEO of Culinary Pros in Las Vegas, a banquet staffing organization. She'll tell you a little bit more about herself and what she does. But hey, I got a quick comment here. If you are not following Litvok Leadership on these social medias, scrolling across the bottom, my question is, why not? Hit like, hit follow, ring the bell, so you are notified of each and every video, each and every posting. We are here to help you improve yourself understand yourself, become the leader that you want to be, and to help your team achieve their individual and community success. So I'm going to bring Sari out right now. Today, we're going to talk about balancing self-confidence and admitting your flaws. So without any further ado, the Queen of Las Vegas, Sari Yuchin. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. Now, uh, it is, what, 9.30 in the morning? It's not lunchtime for you. <laughs> not quite there yet, but uh, in a few hours. But I do got the protein shake going. There you go. You got the protein shake going on. So when we had the fake start, uh, you had said your business, describe your business, and you said this is your 20th year in business? Yes, uh, we just October 4th is when I got licensed here in Las Vegas and we just started our we're on our 20th year of business. Uh, what we do is we provide professional food service workers. We're basically dedicated to the food and beverage world. We have servers, bartenders, chefs, cooks, dishwashers. We also do day of coordinator. Uh, this weekend, we have a large uh, wine tasting event. It's a fundraiser for, it's like a, a wine walk, and we've done them several in the past, so that's exciting. We also have NASCAR going on this weekend, so it's a very cool weekend for us. So if you're in Vegas, or if you are putting together an event in Vegas, and you want the best servers, the best support staff, you should contact Sari, her Contact information on Instagram, Culinary Pros, or the Queen of Las Vegas is scrolling along the bottom. Sari, you would love to hear from them, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Give us a call. We're on call 24 hours for a reason. Because <laughs> Vegas is the town that, that never sleeps. So, so true. So today we're going to be talking about admitting or really balancing self-confidence and admitting your flaws that is what awareness is all about. So, Sari, when I first approached you about this, this topic, you had said you had done some research about it after we had a little conversation. Tell me, um, you know, you're, you're type A. You're a confident uh, woman. Um, we've known each other for years since we're cousins. And admitting our flaws isn't something that I think has necessarily been in our nature or core competency. It's been a learned skill. Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about that. Ooh. Uh, well, you know, listen, we all have flaws and we have to accept that. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in a peer led leadership and it was all about, you know, the search for excellence and and what you I have realized is there's really no such thing as perfection. And if you, you know, you strive for perfection, but it doesn't necessarily happen to happen. And, you know, as I get older, I've gotten into the go with the flow where I, I wear the wave where I believe in, you know, you can't stress out when you're in the middle of the event, you know, you just got to go with the flow and, you know, right. instead of problem solving, it's solving solutions at this point, you know, being proactive. Uh, Thank some you anonymous that. Facebook user loves you. <laughs> Love it. Uh, it's better to just be proactive rather than reactive. There's a lot of situations where I just have to step back, literally, and be like, okay. Tell us about one of those situations. What What is a situation <laughs> where something comes at you and you're like, okay, let me think about this. Let me process this. Give us an example of how you do that. Uh, there are several examples. Oh, a few months back, 
Um, I was approached by a fundraiser, very, very high end. And they gave us five days notice to get a crew of about 20 people. Not only that, where they wanted to do like complete backgrounds where it was like difficult than getting into the White House because they're ex Mossad agents, basically, that was doing the background. So they did end up like, you know, I gave them the, they wanted ID and they wanted Soch and first full name. So I, I gave them like, let's say 30 names. And there was about eight people that said, no, not going to fly. So I didn't question it. It wasn't right. me question. I just did what they asked and it ended up being a fantastic event. And she sent me this beautiful letter. Well, you know, thank you thanking me. You know, I didn't have to do the event, but I said, no, I'm going to step up. It's something I believe in. And I, I chose to, you know, accept that order and we did it. And it went with flying colors. We got this beautiful letter. And just last week, the caterer is also is coming back November and requesting my staff to do all the staffing. So boom, very that, nice. Yeah, very I feel blessed over that. So so when you know we we were both raised um, in the Jewish faith. Okay. And you know you you look at proverbs for um, all sorts of wisdom, under understanding, and, and knowledge. And and I thought that this scripture was appropriate. A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke or correction. How do you handle um, when someone corrects you, and in especially in something that you think is going well or is one of your strengths? You know, as we get older, we're learning more to listen. I think listening has become really important. You know, back in the past, I wasn't so patient because I wanted it now. You know, I had the Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka. And I'm like, I want it and I want it now. You know, being the, you know, the persona of the Queen of Las Vegas, I also do party consulting. So, you know, Old Testament has a lot, you know, to do with my faith and my strength. You know, I do have a very strong Jewish identity. It is right. We talked about... Um, we talked about um, respecting our parents and, you know, I, I love my father dearly. You know, he's still alive. He's 86 years old, Pop sure. Sam, and <laughs> survived Stalin and Hitler. And there were a lot of lessons you know, uh, based on faith. And I always felt like I had a really strong Jewish identity. And you talk about father's instruction. I really do believe in what my father has to say. And I respect that. I mean, I respect my father. He's, he's, you know, listen, he also has his flaws. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, he'll be like, wow. He, it, when my last Chicago trip in July, like he pointed out, he's like, wow, you're right. Like there was a couple things that I've been trying to teach my dad for years and years. And I realized, you know, my best friend told me, Jeff, you know him, you went to college with Jeff, said to me, you know what? You get to the point of your life where you just can't change them. We just have to accept that you can't change that situation. Where like it, it might have taken him thirty or thirty-five years to realize that things I had said were correct. So uh, when it comes to instruction, too, you know, listen, I'm 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 a rebel. I graduated from UNLV. We were the running rebels. I was always the rebel. I'm always the type of person that believes in breaking the rules. When I approach a hotel or a property or whatever, I act like I own the place. <laughs> sure. Someone, someone told me to do that years ago. And let me tell you, it's come in handy. I've uh, been in situations where I had to check up on staff. So I flashed my card. I could get into almost any other, any event and say, okay, I'm checking up on my staff. So, and then I'm, listen, the staff doesn't always know I'm there. Sometimes, you know, it's my eyes and I see how they are see working. What's going on. So, so, so how does your staff handle when you give them constructive criticism? I mean, do they respect your opinion as to what they're doing when they come back to you and go, no, you don't un understand? How do you handle a situation like that that Kelly brings up? Um, you know, it, it's it's about listening to it and coming into, you know, it's it's all about negotiating, too. Sometimes I have to see where I'm coming from. Like, listen, it might be a situation where they want my staff to wear 
black shirt and a black long tie and it's 115 degrees out you sure. got to come to a point where it's like okay i really don't want my staff passing out in the middle of the event so i suggest okay let's do summer attire which is a white polo and either khaki pants or khaki shorts or khaki capris so that's a perfect example of okay you know i'm accepting what you want i know you want a little bit of fancier but you know sometimes we're in a situation where it's 115 degrees we're still at 90 something degrees and it's we're october i mean we're october yeah. 14th. and you know I, I always say to brides brides often oh they think and this is my favorite month because the night times are cool you can sit outside in fact we're having an event uh, uh celebrating a birthday party tonight you just you know what you got going with the flow and you got to accept, okay, if they want it their way, give it to them their way. You want to exceed their, I always say, I don't want to over promise and under deliver. So sure. you have to, in this industry, you have to be flexible, listening to what their needs are. It's the same thing with any industry. I think, you know, real estate, uh, whether it's law or you and I do have similar, how ironic that you and I uh, have similar paths where <laughs> and absolutely. absolutely so and we didn't call each other and told each other we're red today yeah it just kind of happened it was the red thing um you know and and this is something that i've had to learn myself about there's confidence but then there's overconfidence of ignoring your own shortcomings uh the the, the word that I continue to say that people have probably heard me say more than they want to hear me say it on social media is moderation, um, being humble and working to improve in those areas where you need to improve. Because sometimes your greatest strength can also turn into a raging weakness that right. other people see. When when people have come to you, Sari, and said, hey, tone it down a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've heard that at some point. How do you handle that? Uh, well, as back, I would fight it because this is who I am and I accept who I am. And like you said, you talked about that earlier about being extroverted. We're extroverted. We're yeah. leaders. I mean, we come from generation of queens. Like we, I mean, we come from powerful, powerful family where we came from. Doesn't right. matter what and we choose to practice or whatever it is. We believe in faith, we believe in God, and we believe in our strengths. Um, I know who I am. I know where I'm coming from. Listen, I have imperfections. We all are imperf imperfect. We have flaws. Um, listen, there's, you know, you just, you just got to figure it out. You got to get your happy on. You know, life is truly about balance. You know, finding your balance, uh, whether it being, you know, and all different <laughs> aspects of life, finding your balance, working out. I get mad at myself if I don't go to the gym. You know, if yeah. I get if I'm if I, you know, don't do my protein shakes, I feel like my whole day is off kilter. There's just these little things that you have to, you know, like you say, moderation, whether it's food, whether it's, you know, travel even in my travels, you know, I do an extensive amount of traveling. I work my buns off. And, you know, I try to take a vacation every three or four weeks just to get out of town, to breathe. To well, 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 a vacation every three or four weeks? That's my goal. I mean, I don't work five different jobs for nothing. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, you know, I'm a big traveler. I've been to 47 yeah. countries. Um, I leave I leave for Miami on Tuesday. I am going down to the Keys. I'm going diving. I set up a dive. I'm doing a dive where... Um, I'm going to help uh, fix the coral. I don't know if you're aware of the fact that in 2016, 50% of the coral died. So I'm going on an expedition to uh, grow some. We're putting coral together. There's, I just signed up for it. So I'm doing that, I think, on the 20th. So that's exciting. I always have something to look forward to. So Putting coral together. Yes, that's... growing coral. So there's a whole movie said... about it on Netflix. So as you said, you, you know, we are people of faith. We we hear from God. We are very um, um, self-confident. And sometimes that self-confidence can be so blaring, it can, you know, knock out the voice of God that, you know, directing us, um, um, adjusting us, 
um, encouraging us, pointing us in different directions. How do you quiet yourself, okay, yourself mentally, yourself emotionally, to be able to hear from God and take in that direction to overcome flaws? Ooh, I do find myself that I have to decompress a lot. My backyard is kind of my savior. Uh, breathing in, breathing out. Uh, my travels is also that helps me, you know, find, like you say, find the voice of God. I believe in Hashem. You know, I often pray, you know, I wake up in the morning. I said my morning prayer, the Moda Ani, which is, you know, it's saving. Uh, it's talking about allowing our soul to come back to us. Thank you for giving my soul back. When I take a shower, that's like the one thing. That's the one prayer that sticks with me. And then whatever music I'm listening to at the time, I can mm -hmm. usually get that prayer to that song. <laughs> so, Interesting. You know, about being humble too you know like sometimes I'll have such a crazy chaotic day and sometimes I, I just have to just okay it's time to relax and just realize you know what I, I talk about my blessings I always I feel my blessings when things start to fall in my receivables are going well um you know you just it being humble and listening to your blessings like I always talk about I always put that in Facebook I'm like you know feel your blessings I feel like like I'm grateful for my health I'm grateful for my family I'm grateful for my travels I'm grateful of all the love that I receive and all the love that I give you know I, there are so many situations that I've had to step in and help out um, you know I take things very personal when it comes to the business you know like as someone makes you know tarnishes the name of my company i just you know what it's i give people chance i try right. you know I try the three strike rule three strikes and you're out but I, you know i'm a giver i'm a kind person if someone's in a pinch or a situation i help out whether it's i usually try to gift people if they need you know people ask for loans but i prefer to just gift them you know that's you know i don't want that in return and i believe whatever you give we're going to get back 20 fold there was a situation where i gave someone a 20 dollar bill while i was driving in my car and then boom 40 minutes later i get like you know two thousand dollar job order so you know i it, it's about being humble it, it, it's a biblical principle that when, when, when you give um 20 60 100 fold return to you I have seen it. I have seen the blessings of Hashem. You know, there was a part, you know, after my mother had passed, there was a part of me that I, I felt a little estranged from my faith. And I felt like I had this anger towards Jerusalem because I blamed Jerusalem for, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, what can I say? I, I love my Israel. My sister is there right now. She's probably watching. Well, it's, just, it's the Sabbath, so she may not be. But, uh, you know, we're, we've always had a, Listen, my father survived Stalin and Hitler. He's still alive yeah. to tell stories when I was in Chicago just to hear that. So I, I believe in, you know, there was a reason. There's a reason I'm here on earth. There's a reason for my strength. Both my parents gave me that strength. I don't necessarily think that my siblings have the same kind of strength. You know, my, my mother used to yell at my dad and say, you give her too much power. But I think that was a good thing. I mean, that's what brought me to who I am and what I do. I mean, not everybody can handle the queen aspect and yeah. Well, so you, you, you know, it, it's funny. I was in a meeting two days ago and we were talking about something and someone looked at me and they're like, you really think that? How can you think that? And without missing a beat, I just said to them, I said, you know what? To know Sean is to love Sean and to love Sean is to know Sean. I'm like, over time, you will understand how my head works. And it, it's, it's just one of those things that I think people don't understand that when you know that, you know, you can achieve a, a certain level of something and when you know that you're hearing from God in what you're doing, but at the same time, you're open to constructive criticism and you've embraced your own flaws and see where you need to improve, mm -hmm. it gives you great power. And, and so often I think people miss the last part of embracing their flaws and looking to improve them. What do you think? A hundred percent, you know, embrace my flaws. I just, you know, all my life, I, all, I often say, I just am known for my expression. I, I am epic, but I'm not perfect. 
<laughs> I like that. I like Many that. People have heard me say that, you know, I have all different kinds of quotes that, you know, I try. Listen, I, you know, we all try. I think that, you know, we come from, you know, we come from a, a strong background where it's like, uh, we don't, we don't mind getting our hands dirty. We got to do what we got to do to, you know, take care of our families, take care of ourselves. You know, we're givers and yeah. Okay. I get that. Not everybody loves me. You know, oh, not yeah. everybody loves Sean, you know, I'm either going to accept who they, who you are or they don't, you know, it is what it is. I can't, I can't satisfy everyone all the time. It's the same thing with the clients. I try my hardest. I had a situation, a client, it's just impossible to please this man. And I finally said, okay, let's be proactive this year. He goes crazy when it comes to the Jewish New Year's. That is his holiday. Uh, every Jewish person has a different holiday that they love. My favorite holiday is Purim because you get to get drunk and you get to get dressed up and you get to party and have fun. But this gentleman liked Rosh Hashanah. That was, that was his thing. So I decided to be proactive. I brought my captain to his house to have a meeting. That way he could go through the itinerary, what's on the menu. And he was a half hour on the phone with me afterwards and said, Sari, best crew ever. It was a great idea to be pro to have that meeting. He's like, I just want them forever and ever. And he was so, so satisfied. And so, so, he ended up like handing hundred dollar bills to everybody at the end of the event. So I felt, I, it felt good. That That's a good, so. What about when people um, are, are giving lip service to people of, of, about change? You know, someone tells, you tell someone that they need to, you know, you give them constructive criticism, you give them encouragement, you're coaching them. I mean, although most of your staff, I, th I think, are what, 1099s? Um, no, nope. no, 1099, they're all W2. That's why people use me, because I'm legit. Oh, they're all W2s. Okay. They're all W-2s. They're fully taken care of liability. That's what I'm selling. I'm selling legitimacy, workers comp, everything. Everything. Okay. So, so especially since they're all W-2 employees for you and, okay. and you have a coaching moment with them and, yes. and you're, you, you know, coaching to their strengths, but you also got to mention their flaws and they're like, yeah, yeah, I'll improve. I will. Okay. And you know, they're just blowing smoke. Okay. Oh, well, you know, I talk about a shelf life. Everyone has a shelf life, even in biblical terms, you know, like something. Everybody has a shelf life. Somebody might have a small shelf or they might have a long shelf. I have employees that have been working for me since day one. As I, to I told my, um, as when I, even when I train my operations manager, I explained to her, everybody has a shelf life. <laughs> so it might be a small shelf and my mm -hmm. she is even less tolerant if someone burns her it makes her look bad then she's just she cuts them out i i i often give them like the, the three strike rule and then you know sometimes they could <laughs> they could go past six strikes in one event you know that's all it takes right. listen you you know you sometimes you have to weed out the swamp you have to weed out the alligators you know I've had cooks that completely con, you know, like pretended that they knew this, 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 this. The client, you know, calls me and says, they're clueless. And then I've had situations where it was the opposite, where it's like they just asked for a prep cook and I sent them an executive chef. So, of course, they were going to be happy because, you know, a lot of, sometimes they'll even call me and say, this person is so overqualified, but they're fabulous. I'm like, well, you're definitely getting your money's worth. So Absolutely. Uh, did that answer? Question. Yeah, yeah, I, th I, th I think that that answers it. I, I mean, you, you know, you, you've got to be able to have conversation with people right. um, to be, you know, the the I think the best way to put it is before you can coach someone, you have to have allowed yourself to be coached. It, it, it follows the principle of, you know, before you're given opportunity to lead, you need to be a good follower. So so before you started your business, and it's grown over these 20 years, how did you walk in the footsteps of a follower to set yourself up in business? And how do you still do that today to keep yourself fresh? 
<laughs> Interesting. Um, I have had many a mentors. I'm not going to lie about that. I've had some amazing mentors. I've even written, you know, about some of my mentors, whether it was a mentor in business, whether it was a mentor in traveling. So uh, I learned, I learned from people. I ran a service in Los Angeles, just like the one that I own. Okay. For six years. So I learned, I learned, I learned the business from this woman. She's, she was a Highland Park girl. I still love her dearly. I learned a lot. There was often, I have moments where I'm like, wow, that was such a random, that was her first name. Uh, she's still alive. <laughs> thank God. And I, I like, I literally, I'll catch myself and be like, wow, that was Randy. Like I, I'll do something that my old boss would do. I'll be like, and, and it's actually a compliment. And, you know, you know, I, I, I've seen like mistakes that had happened and I learned from those mistakes. Okay. So hopefully I didn't bring some of those mistakes forward. You know, there were situations that, you know, mistakes were made, you know, I, we had some rough years, you know, we've had good years, we've had great years and we've had kind of a roller coaster, but I was fortunate enough to have six years of working for a service, just like the one that I opened up here in Las Vegas in Los Angeles. And that's a, you know, that's, you're dealing with here in Vegas, we have less than 3 million people in Los Angeles. We had 13. We were staffing for Golden Globes, uh, Academy Awards, Democratic National Convention, uh, presidential luncheon. So I really gained the experience from there and brought it forth to Vegas. Now, I had lived in Vegas in the 90s. I went to school at UNLV and I was the catering director of the Hotel Association. Oh, my. That, that is the largest association on campus and the only one that can serve alcohol. So I had created this, it was called Students to the Rescue, which was basically what I'm doing now is I provided staff, students, so the students would make 80% of whatever I was billing out. It was a non-for-profit organization. So I had experience doing it then. And then when I returned to Vegas, I opened up that book of all these job orders. So I was an assistant director one year, and then I became the director two years worth, I had like all these high end, I had all these clients. And when I came back to Vegas, I just went to that book and called all the clients and said, Hey, remember me? I was, you know, I said, I've now opened up a staffing service here in Las Vegas. And that's how I launched it. Back in the days, we would fax. Our marketing was through fax. I would do a marketing letter. Hi, this is Culinary Pros. We provide it to us. So whether it's high end businesses or or even, you know, personal, I would make, phone. hey, Jeremy, there was a big, big uh, Italian judge back in town. She passed away. Every Christmas, she would call me, Sari, I need your staff to help me out. She had a big, you know, Christmas Eve, they go crazy. They have like 20 different dishes, probably 80% of them being some fish. So, you know, I repeat business. Even her family members still call me now and say, Sari, we miss you. <laughs> Well, and, and I would say you wouldn't have repeat business if A, you weren't confident, B, you didn't provide a good service, and, and C, you weren't um, aware of your own flaws and consistently and constantly working on them because to last in business 20 years is, right. you know, especially in a competitive industry, you know, all industry is competitive, but I would right. think your industry in Vegas is super competitive, super needed, but super competitive to be able to bring in staff for all these uh, events. You know, people have to have a good experience with you, not just fun and flamboyant, but also consistent in A to B, B to C. Well, yeah, I know what I bring to the table. Like, you know what, I, I often say, like, people don't want to pay my price. I say, you know what, you get what you pay for. I'm not the cheapest, but I'm the best. So sometimes like I'll even get phone calls from people like, oh, I really wish I would have used you and blah, blah, blah. So I know what I bring to the table. I tell my people, you know, we go through a training. I, we talk about having a can-do attitude. If you're working a private, you know, you gear them up. You say, okay, acquaint yourself with the kitchen. Know where the spices are. If the client asks you to sweep the, the patio, be willing to do so. Get in there. Uh, I talk about, you know, the cleanup is very important. Often you get complaints about the cleanup. You know about mm -hmm. the cleanup. So I, I say to people, do and you know, we're not leaving until everything is cleaned up. Absolutely. Make that kitchen shine and make it look like nobody was even there. I talk about Ziploc bags. <laughs> the importance of Ziploc, 
if you take a pan like a pot and you stick it in the fridge you end up like there's no space so i often tell people the trick put everything in ziploc bags seal it up and then boom it's easy for people to access it doesn't take up so much room it can be flexible so the power of a ziploc bag well, we've talked about a lot of things today, and I want to bring us back to where, where we started, that okay. awareness is balancing self-confidence and admitting your flaws. So as we wrap up in, in these next few minutes, I'm going to hand it over to you, and I want you to speak directly to the audience that is watching now and will be watching on, on replay. Tell them how you personally balance your self-confidence with admitting your flaws. Well, uh, you know, life is about balance. I often, you know, I talk to myself and I have to remind myself, you are the queen. <laughs> and remember that you are the queen. You may not be the perfect queen, but life is truly about balance. Whether it's business, whether it's personal, you just, you got to go with the flow at this point and get you happy on, you know, after COVID, you know, I, I, I was, I, everyone went through the funk of when, you know, everything I held on. I chose to hold on. I was told, hold on. Mm -hmm. So I, said, I know, I know how Vegas is. I have seen a downfall. I know that things will come back, and I was right. I mean, thank you know, thank. I thank the Lord. Perhaps you can say is that you know, business is up. I'm past my. I'm thirty percent over my 2019 numbers. Wow. I, you know what? I, to the moon at this point, and I, I feel, and that's where. It, and it comes in with your talk about your blessings and your confidence. And I knew, I knew that like, this is going to be something needed. You know, I don't need all the clients. I just need one or two or three good ones that pay in a timely manner. They're loyal to me. They're good to me. And I take care of them. Sometimes these onesies and twosies are just way too many headaches. So I realize, okay, I can't kill myself for these onesies or twosies. It's just, it's, it becomes overwhelming to me. I'd rather focus on, the clients that are loyal to me that Absolutely. are good and pay in a timely manner. So I feel like confident in what I know what I bring to the table and uh, I bring, and I try to bring, you know, positivity and I've taught, you know, I've taught many of I've been a mentor to a lot of people. I've taught my captains. I've taught my supervisors. Okay. This is how we work things out. Sometimes you do need to step back and be proactive and think about it. Don't react to a situation, make it work, make the client happy, do what you got to do. And that's, uh, that's what I said. <laughs> that's my that's suggestion. Great. That's great. Everyone, we have been talking with the queen of Las Vegas, Sari Yuchin. You can reach her on Instagram at Culinary Pros or at the queen of Las Vegas. We've been talking about balancing self-confidence and admitting your flaws. Uh, Sari, thank you for being on, on the show yet again. You're uh, always a fun guest. Uh, it's good to have a public conversation with, with my cousin and you always bring the audience too. So thank you. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, we got, we had a couple pop-ups. Thank you, Sean. Take care of yourself. Be healthy. I pray for your health. I, I truly appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. And everyone, we're going to take next week off. Why? Because it's mine and my wife's, what year is it? Okay. 33rd wedding anniversary next Friday. So no Litvak leadership live, but we'll be back in two weeks with another guest and uh, be happy, be well, and be blessed in all you do. See ya.